Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning about the latest on the search for a three-year-old girl last seen on San Antonio's northwest side. Plus, the jury will resume deliberations today in the trial of the suburban Minneapolis police officer who shot and killed a motorist after she says she meant to use her taser instead of her gun. Outside with live cam, there is more moisture out there this morning, so it's a little more damp, but I think it feels cooler this morning than it did yesterday morning. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. Hope you slept well last night. It is Tuesday, December 21st. Thanks for joining us today, and that's appropriate 38 degrees for the first day of winter. I let Trim out this morning, had yeah. a vest on, went back and grabbed the jacket because it was brisk this yeah. morning. We're, we are colder uh, by about, uh, let's see, this time yesterday we were right around mid 40s, so we're in the upper 30s right now. And the humidity has stayed about the same, dew point, but relative humidity has gone up. The dew points have stayed about the same because temperatures are dropping. That may cause a little bit of an issue as far as some fog. fog. We've been seeing, yeah, just a couple of hints of it, not anything big, but as the morning rolls on, we'll have to watch out for it. So clear skies out there at the airport, and yep, it is cold. Most everybody's down in the 30s right now, and head out I-10, and it is freezing. Bernie Stage Comfort as well as Kerrville, uh, Helotus at 35, but then Take a look at those numbers and then you take a look at these numbers dew point temperature so they're running neck and neck really really dry air out there but again relative humidity when those uh, temperature and dew point temperatures get very close to each other with the clear skies the dry air and we may see a little bit of fog a hint of it around castorville nothing too much yet uh, some around gonzalez but again Got to keep a lookout for it over the next few hours, especially east of I-35. Mountain Cedar on the moderate side, mold is low. And throughout the rest of today, these are the kind of numbers you would expect for the first day of winter. Winter begins right about 10 o'clock. We'll be at 49 degrees, actually 958. If you're splitting hairs and 65 for a high temperature today. You want to hear about Christmas yet or you want to wait? Yes, yes, yes we do. Yes. We do. Hot. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are you actually using that word? Hotter. Oh, wow. Okay. Over to you guys. Thank you very much, Mike. We will talk to you in just a bit. We begin with an update on that Amber Alert right here at home. This morning, San Antonio police looking for a three-year-old girl last seen on the northwest side. Lena Sardar Kill was last seen around 5 o'clock last night in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. She's only about 4 feet tall, weighs 55 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes. Officials say the child has straight shoulder-length hair that was last seen in a ponytail. She was wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. Police believe the child may be in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information about the abduction, call SAPD. The number is at the bottom of your screen, 210-207-7660. A home's second floor torched. Now firefighters are trying to figure out what went wrong. This happened just before 8 p.m. last night at a home on the far north side on Maltese Garden. That's north of Blanco and Wilderness Oak. Everyone inside the home was able to get out safely, and firefighters say that fire began on the second floor, and that's where it was contained. Still no word on a cause. Jurors resumed deliberating this morning in the manslaughter trial of former police officer Kim Potter. After days of emotional testimony, closing arguments centered around whether the shooting of Dante Wright was a tragic mistake or extreme negligence. Here's ABC's Rick Klein with more. The defendant told you her sons will be home for the holidays. But you know who won't be home for the holidays is Dante Wright. This morning, the fate of Kim Potter, the former Minnesota police officer who shot and killed Dante Wright during a traffic stop, is now in the hands of a jury. In the same courtroom where Derek Chauvin was convicted of murdering George Floyd, Potter's lawyers Monday made the case that Wright's death was a tragic accident, saying Potter mistook her firearm for her taser. Nobody's perfect, ladies and gentlemen, and this lady here made a mistake, and my gosh, a mistake is not a crime. Potter's lawyers insisting she was justified in using deadly force because she feared Wright would injure another officer while driving away. Dr. Wright caused his own death, unfortunately. If he would have gone and with the officers, been handcuffed, go to the squad car, go take your ride downtown, and it's over. But the prosecution urging the jury to reject the idea that Potter simply made a mistake. There's no mistake defense. You will not see an instruction on the defense of mistake. 
the judge will not give you an instruction that says a person is not guilty if they commit a mistake. That's not the law. Prosecutors arguing Potter was reckless and negligent in her use of force. She knew she had both weapons on her duty belt. She knew how to get it right. But she failed to get it right. She failed Dante Wright. Rick Klein, ABC News, New York. Well, Omicron has now raced ahead of other variants and is now the dominant version of the coronavirus here in the United States. Federal health officials say that Omicron accounted for an estimated 73 percent of new infections last week. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention numbers show a nearly sixfold increase in the proportion of infections in only a week. Since the end of June, the Delta variant has been the main version causing U.S. infections. And at least 375 people have died after Super Typhoon Ray swept through the Philippines last week. That's according to the latest tally from Philippines National Police. In addition, 515 people are injured and 56 people are still unaccounted for. The storm made landfall Thursday at a popular tourist and surfing destination with winds up to 160 miles per hour, equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane. The Pentagon making efforts to tackle extremism within military ranks. It's outlining a clearer, sharper definition of extremist behavior. It comes nearly a year after the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Like the previous rules, the new guidance doesn't prohibit membership in an extremist organization, but officials say it makes it more difficult to participate. And for the first time, the new directive also covers social media. Officials say they counted approximately 100 cases of extremism within U.S. military ranks in 2021. At least 74 current or former U.S. military service members have been charged in the attack on Capitol Hill. Right now, 436, about 38 degrees. And still ahead, how the phrase home for the holidays is taking on a whole new meaning for some members of the community who used to be homeless. Up next in morning sports, Spurs get a much needed win on the road last night in L.A. And it is game day for the UTSA Roadrunners. It's their bowl bid tonight. And taking a look outside with live cam, very cold, 38 degrees right now for the start of winter, but things will definitely change during the week. We'll be right back. Welcome back to GMSA 440 Spurs in L.A. last night trying to bounce back against the Clippers after ups, uh, the upsetting loss to the Kings. DeJounte Murray knocks down the short jumper to give the Spurs a five point lead early. And that would set the pace for the rest of the night for the Spurs. Murray delivered his third triple double in five games with 24 points, 12 rebounds and 13 assists. He helped give San Antonio a nice victory over the Clippers. Final score 116 92. Jakob Pertl added 17 points and 11 rebounds while Doug McDermott scored 16 points. As the Spurs improved to two and one on their four game road trip, San Antonio pushed the advantage past the 20 point mark thanks to a three pointer by Keldon Johnson, who finished with 12 points, 12 rebounds. Derek White also had 15 points for San Antonio. Spurs out rebounded LA 67 43 while holding a 68 44 advantage in the points in the paint. San Antonio had a little trouble knocking off the Clippers just over a month after a 106 92 loss to them, also at LA. The Spurs have now won their sixth game on the road, matching their number of home victories. Next up, San Antonio will play the Lakers on Thursday. Then the Spurs return home on Sunday to take on the Detroit Pistons. It's time. Today is the day for the UTSA Roadrunners. They'll be hoping to add to the uh, Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl trophy to their collection. The trophy is on display yesterday before today's big game against San Diego State. Roadrunners were three point underdogs as of last night. That's even though they have a better record than the Aztecs and won their conference championship. The Roadrunners held one final walkthrough at Toyota Stadium ahead of their showdown. Before that was the final Frisco Bowl press conference where we talked with coaches about running back Sincere McCormick not playing in the game to focus on going pro. I'm happy for Sincere. I'm proud of him. Um, you know, he made his own decision and, um, you know, I'm backing him regardless of what, what it, whatever it is. And, you know, this is going to be the first time I won't be playing with Sincere for in the first, you know, for about eight years now so it's gonna be crazy so you know I love him to death so I can't wait to see what he does up there and I know he's gonna uh, you know do what we all expect him to do so happy for him for sure. Tonight's matchup starts at 6 30 p.m. on ESPN. Remember you can get all of our UTSA Frisco Bowl coverage over at KSAT.com.
very exciting. We wish him the best of luck. Good luck, UTSA. That's right. Time now, 442 and 38 degrees for now. Still ahead, Christmas is a holiday many families are looking forward to. And for one San Antonio father who recently completed rehab, we're going to tell you why he has even more of a reason to celebrate. Up next, shopping secrets from the experts. How you can still get this year's hottest holiday gifts online. And welcome back. It's 445. There is still time to buy this year's hottest holiday gifts online. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, shopping secrets from the experts. Shoppers can use really simple tactics like creating wish lists on a retailer's website or even just setting notifications for certain Twitter accounts. Anne Marie Alcantara of the Wall Street Journal says if you can set up new stock notifications, there's hope that you might be able to find that sold out gift that's still on your list. She says start with the manufacturer's direct retail site. Many have signups to alert you when new inventory drops, then branch out. And another system that people can employ, which is really dependent on the retailer and what the product is, is virtual queue systems, no matter what the day is, what email, whatever you're doing, you can at least have a guaranteed place in line to get the item. And we'll have more tips, tricks, and strategies for getting those gifts crossed off your list, all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. The saying home for the holidays has a very special meaning for hundreds of people that used to be homeless. However, thanks to a housing surge initiative, San Antonio has exceeded its goal of rehousing 500 individuals and families by the end of the year. Our Jesse Degollado introduces us to a family that's preparing for a very Merry Christmas. Joe Gomez says this is the most beautiful Christmas tree he's ever seen. I actually just put the tree together and they decorated it so I love this tree. His five children did the decorating. They also had their own art gallery on the walls. They're my little world, you know, without them, everything was crumbling. Out of rehab in the van he'd been living in with his children, Gomez is finally getting them back from Child Protective Services for more than just a visit. He's in his own apartment now, with presents donated for his kids. Joe Gomez says he'll never forget walking through the door of his apartment for the first time. It was like, this is my home now. It's not easy um, to work with someone on budgeting and life skills and, and to overcome such tremendous obstacles. But those who do, like Gomez, are a big reason why it's said the city of San Antonio and 25 nonprofits and agencies were up to the challenge of rehousing 500 people by the end of the year. By simplifying the process, working with landlords, and using federal funds, Gomez is among 538 people no longer living on the street. August through the end of the year, and we've exceeded that goal ahead of December 31st, so we're super excited. Yeah. Everything I have now is because Sam Ministries helped me out. Being disabled and on Social Security, he says Sam Ministries is even paying the rent for this and a larger apartment in the near future. It was the best thing that could happen to me. After coming this far. Every brick that life threw at me, I just used it to build something. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Now truly home for the holidays. Yeah, that's a good story. And it's 38 degrees. It feels like the holidays yep. for right now. Yep. For right now. That's the operative phrase there. So yeah. Happy first day of winter later this morning. Later on. Yes. Just before 10 o'clock. So get ready to celebrate, you know, strike up the van. Confetti that looks like snow, all that stuff. Aww. Yeah, I like that. Go find some. Okay. Uh, this is, we're going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there and yeah, very cold temperatures. Sneak peek to Christmas. Well, you weren't kidding. We'll wow. just, leave, we'll just kind of leave that there. So you can just read it. And weep right now. Now some people say that and go, that's Miami nice. Well, and yeah, yeah, a lot of people love warm weather, so we've got some very dry air, not only down here at the surface, but also upstairs, and that's why we're going to have some beautiful blue skies around here today, and the sunrise is going to be spectacular. Same thing with the sunset, and the dew point temperatures, of course, remain very low, but they are close to the actual air temperatures, and so again, that's why we got to be on the lookout for a little bit of patchy fog as the morning rolls on. So going to be really comfortable today. Tomorrow, not bad. Starting off, we'll still be on the chilly side tomorrow morning and the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here, but it's not going to be this just, you know, immediate surge of humidity coming on in here. So it will be comfortable throughout the rest of the week, despite the fact that obviously things are definitely going to be warming up. So we don't have any cloud cover like we had yesterday. 
and that's what's been allowing temperatures to drop down. And around the country, well, there's the big system that helped to give us the rain over the weekend. It's moved off to the east of us. And then, boy, there's a big old front moving through the northern tier of the United States. But all that is going to be staying well up there to the north of us. Most of the country right now has some pretty cold temperatures two international falls and as cold as 22 right now at Wichita. So yeah, except for Florida, winter has taken a nice hold, but then it's going to kind of release that grip as time rolls on over the next couple of days. And again, it's because of that high, which is going to start to build on in here. So we've got the low that gave us the rain moving off to the east. And then as this ridge builds in, temperatures start to go up over the next couple of days. And that thing is just going to kind of take hold. It's going to be parked over northern Mexico. Mexico, and it keeps all of that very cold air. That's kind of the dividing line right there. Keeps all that cold air well up there to the north of us. And also with this configuration, you really don't get much of anything except for a lot of sunshine out there. A couple of scattered clouds here and there. Today, 59 degrees. So right after winter officially begins, yeah, it is going to feel like it. Mid 60s, that's about the normal high temperature this time of year. Plenty of sunshine out there. Beautiful blue skies. Tomorrow morning, we start off definitely on the cold side again. And once again, we gain about anywhere from almost 25 to oh, 30 degrees. A lot of places, 72. Keep adding to that, 78, 80, 83 wow. on Christmas. Santa's going to be sweating. <laughs> Hopefully he has a light suit. Yeah. Well, I was going to say Santa's a veteran by now. Yeah. He dresses in layers. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, let's hope so. Okay, <laughs> oh, it's the reindeer I'm worried about. Uh -oh. Right now, 451, about 38 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the upcoming Harry Potter reunion special. Here are your lottery numbers. First, though, pick three, one, six, five, fireball, zero. Daily four number six, two, one, two, fireball, nine. Cash five, four, nine, 17, 18, 35. Texas two step, 17, 21, 24, 34. Bonus ball, 11. And your Powerball. 2, 13, 23, 34, 66, Powerball 2, Power Play 4. Good luck. Holiday music is topping the Billboard charts, and the cast of Harry Potter returns for a reunion. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. With just days to go until Christmas, the latest Billboard Hot 100 singles chart is showing some serious holiday cheer. Six of the top ten tunes are holiday songs, with the Bobby Helms 1957 classic Jingle Bell Rock the oldest. It's the most Andy Williams is there too, along with Brenda Lee and Burl Ives. Wham's 1984 hit Last Christmas is the oldest of the modern classics to make the top ten. But topping the chart for the third time since 2017 is Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. It feels like no time has passed and loads of time has passed. Emma Watson from the brand new trailer for the Harry Potter 20th anniversary Return to Hogwarts special. It debuts on HBO Max New Year's Day. Open Gangnam Style. Nine years ago today, Gangnam Style by South Korean rapper Psy became the first YouTube video to garner a billion views. And Samuel L. Jackson, 73 Tuesday. I'm Chris. For Watson, ABC News. Nine years since Gagnum style. Oh, yeah. I thought I heard five. I was like, it mm -hmm. seems longer. Mm -hmm. Nine's appropriate. I'm not. The director <laughs> asked me to do it, and that's not going to happen. 456, about 38 <laughs> degrees. I'm so sorry. It's too early. It's still ahead on GMSA. We're going to have a preview as President Biden gets ready to speak to Americans today about the surge and new coronavirus cases. New Year's Eve party planning underway, but Airbnb is saying not so fast. We'll tell you about their anti-party protocol coming up in your morning tech bites. And a quick look at the roads with Transkai. There's a look there at I-35 at Brooklyn. Stephen Cabasa has just walked in the studio. We'll be checking in with him in just a minute. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a man is hurt after shots ring out on the southeast side overnight. Now police are looking for suspects. Plus, President Biden is set to give an update on the latest coronavirus variants later today. And here at home this morning, colder this morning than yesterday morning, but a big, big warm up is on the way just in time for Santa. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 21st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, at least for now, uh, 38 degrees. And I guess a 
officially a few hours from now it'll be winter time. First day of winter later on this morning. Here's Mike Osterhage. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Remember last week we were up uh, near record high temperatures and then we were talking about how we were going to see about a 50 degree swing from those highs to the lows over the weekend. Well, let's do that in reverse because we're in the 30s right now and we're looking at a about a 45 degree swing in temperatures to the highs as we approach Christmas. So we'll get that all sorted out in a moment. 38 and dew points at 36, so very dry air. But notice how the relative humidity is quite high at 93%. We've got some clear skies out there. We're going to make it up into the mid 60s later on today. So these are the kind of numbers. Actually, we're starting off on the, the cool side of things as compared to where we should be starting off. And then mid 60s, that's what you'd expect for the very first day of winter. The aquifer yesterday did go up one, excuse me, two tenths of a foot and the allergens mountain cedar moderate and mold is on the low side. One thing we're gonna have to watch out for this morning is maybe a patch of fog. We've seen just a couple of spots there. Um, Castroville has dropped down to about five miles visibility right now. Seven at Pleasanton and further off to the east. Victoria now has some pretty thick fog. So this is with the again clear skies. The heat radiates out into space and we've got relatively high humidity. We have to watch out for that for the next uh, couple of hours. Catula has got some fog as well. So other than that patchy um, Patchy fog, cold, clear sky is going to be a beautiful uh, sunrise. If you don't have any fog, then sunny mid 60s later on today and the rest of the week. Yep, it is going to be heating up. We'll have a cold start tomorrow again and still maybe jacket weather in the mornings, light jacket weather. Then we go into Christmas sunshine. We're looking at low 80s. Not a record for Christmas, but uh, it's going to be one of the hottest Christmases we've seen around here. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. A lot of people uh, hitting the roads to go to Grandma's house. I hope so, Mike. That'd be a great trip. You know, uh, Christmas Day may be hot, but the roads are looking cool this morning. Let's take a quick look at Trans Guys, see how things are shaping up for this Tuesday morning. Uh, there we have 35 at 37. Few folks out on the roadway this morning. 281 at Hildebrandt. Uh, looking pretty uh, empty out over there, and, and that's what we've been seeing throughout the morning. And as we saw yesterday, there wasn't a whole lot of activity out on the roadways this early in the morning. We saw a few stalls out there uh, and right now we are looking pretty much at the same situation that we saw yesterday. Empty roads and a stall right here off US 90 eastbound at Couples Road. Uh, earlier, there was a little bit of a buildup in those east and westbound lanes, but it looks like that has cleared up. So hopefully that driver has received some assistance and the lanes will be wide open. But if you do have to head out for whatever reason this early in the morning, take a look at our map because we have a lot of green on the screen for you there. So you're not going to encounter any problems for any early morning destinations, but of course, always take it easy out on the roadways. And if you have to travel into San Antonio, we do have these inbound times for you. So check this out right now. Uh, right now, I 10 East uh, coming into Bernie from down to the downtown San Antonio area is 25 minutes at this hour. If you are coming in from 281 southbound Bulverde to downtown is 26 minutes. And if you are coming in from 35 uh, New Braunfels, we have 25 minutes at this hour. So not looking too bad if you are coming into San Antonio, but one last look around town and maybe the Christmas time, but these roads are looking a little bit spooky because they're so empty. We'll have some construction to talk about coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police believe an argument led to a shooting on the city's southeast side overnight. Happened just before two o'clock this morning in the 8900 block of South Presa. SAPD says an argument started in the parking lot of the bar between a victim and four male suspects. Police said the suspect shot the victim, then got away in a four-door black car. Officers saw the vehicle speed off, but they were not able to catch up with him. The victim was taken to a hospital in stable condition. This morning, the Omicron variant has now been detected in almost every U.S. state. However, there's encouraging news from Moderna about its booster shot effectiveness. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, a COVID scare for President Biden after he was exposed to a staff member who recently tested positive. The White House says Biden was near the staff member Friday on Air Force One. The president tested negative Sunday and Monday. He'll be tested again tomorrow. This Omicron variant is stunningly transmissible. It is really ripping through the United States at an incredible rate. Later today, President Biden will reveal new steps to fight Omicron, the highly contagious variant caused causing cases to explode across the country. The plan is aimed at providing more Americans with at-home tests, increasing the number of vaccination sites, and helping hospitals overwhelmed by the surge in cases. We really need to test and be careful in crowds, especially
especially during the holiday season. COVID cases are up 96% nationwide since October. Most are now the highly transmissible Omicron variant. In New York State, cases have tripled in one week. But New York City's mayor expects the latest spike to last weeks, not months. We're going to see a, a really fast upsurge in cases. In the meantime, an unvaccinated man in Houston with underlying health issues is now the first known American to die with Omicron. Experts believe the variant does not cause more severe illness. And although Omicron appears to evade two shots of the vaccine, doctors say a booster restores protection. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, eight days ago, the first two cases of Omicron were confirmed in Bear County. That number is now up to five. So here locally, we do not know the full extent of Omicron cases. The genetic sequencing to identify variants takes about 10 to 14 days. Dr. Anita Kurian with Metro Health says nationally, case numbers are doubling every two days, and those who already had COVID are not necessarily in the clear. Uh, we cannot prevent the Omicron surge. It is surging around the world. It's a matter of time before uh, we, this becomes a dominant strain locally. And most doctors are saying the best way to protect against the Omicron variant is to be vaccinated and to wear a mask. Back to Washington, Democrats are trying to pick up the pieces after West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin effectively crushed President Joe Biden's big domestic policy bill. Now they're trying to figure out if the $2 trillion initiative can be refashioned to win his crucial vote. White House, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said they're going to work hard to finish. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer vows that the chamber will vote early in the new year. Actor Chris Noth has been dropped from the CBS drama The Equalizer in the wake of sexual assault allegations. CBS and the show's production company released a statement saying Noth would no longer film additional episodes of the show effective immediately. Two women accused him of sexual assault in an article by The Hollywood Reporter last week. He has denied the allegations saying they are quote categorically false and that the encounters were consensual. His representative has not commented yet on the drop from the show. 50738 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why Airbnb is tightening its anti party rules for rentals. Up next, a warning about a shopping scam involving some popular electric scooters, bikes, or hoverboards. And taking a look outside with a live cam, you're going to want to grab that jacket this morning. It's a very chilly 38 degrees right now. We'll be right back. If you're shopping for an electric scooter, bike, or hoverboard, the Better Business Bureau has a warning. GoTrax is a North Texas-based company that offers steep discounts for the in-demand electric products, and customers report buying the products on the company's website and Amazon. On average, people have paid about $200 for a product, but the Better Business Bureau says hundreds of customers have reported not receiving a product or getting a faulty one. That's another reason why I went with that company, because they have adult scooters. Like you see downtown when they're, they're right there, it was that kind of scooter. Electric, all that. It had a speedometer, a headlight, a radio, you know, it was a nice scooter. So, yeah, I, I'll just probably look into another company this time. As of right now, the Better Business Bureau is reporting nearly 300 complaints from GoTrax customers. San Antonio police warning about a new scam. It involves QR codes. Police say someone is placing them on parking meters here in downtown San Antonio. So they're tricking people who use their cell phones to scan the code, which then directs them to a fake website, then takes your credit card information. Seriously? Investigators say whoever's behind this is forcing people to use the QR codes by jamming up the card slots. It's little things like this. You're in a hurry. You shoot a QR code. Uh, you pay some money to a website, and it turns out to be the wrong website. And you know, we're we're all unfortunately we're aided by technology, and of course, we we suffer at the hands of technology at times. Please say that you are better off using the meters which print out the receipts. Beware. 512, about 38 degrees. And still ahead, why Google is cutting off its OnHub router support next year. Plus, we'll give you a first look at LB, LG's first gaming laptop. Honestly, I thought I was getting my floors clean. Then I learned my mop could be loaded with bacteria. That means I gotta clean my mop too? Oh, so I gotta.
a Swiffer wet jet to get a cleaner clean. I stick on a fresh pad, boom, it's ready to go. The spray breaks down dirt and the pad absorbs it deep inside. Unlike my mop that can spread it around and wet jets even safe on wood. All this, bye-bye. It's so simple. I get a cleaner clean every day. Try wet jet with a money back guarantee. With Mucinex All-in-One, you've got powerful relief from your worst cold and flu symptoms. So when you need to show your cold who's boss, grab Mucinex All-in-One and get back to your rhythm. The relief you need, the cash you want. Firefighter Maggie Gronwald knows how to handle dry weather and dry cracked skin. New Gold Bond Advanced Healing Ointment. Restore healthy skin with no sticky feeling. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Welcome back. Uh, just about 516. Airbnb is tightening its restrictions on New Year's Eve parties. ABC's Rick Klein has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, stricter rules for Airbnb. The platform is tightening anti-partying measures for people ringing in the new year. The company says guests without a history of positive reviews on its platform won't be able to make reservations for an entire house on New Year's Eve. Google is planning to cut off support to its on-hub routers. The controls will be turned off at the end of next year. After the cutoff date, the on-hub routers will continue to work as normal, but there will be no new software or security updates. The company is urging customers to update to a new Wi-Fi setup. Finally, gamers rejoice. LG out with its first gaming laptop. At 17 inches, LG's new computer is larger than a lot of other gaming laptops. Its price and release date are expected to be announced early next year. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Not Rick Klein, but that's okay. 5, 6, 17 right now on your busy Tuesday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I saw flashing lights out there. Yes, we have some flashing lights, some activity out here of 35 at Florida. As you can see that we also have one of those records out there. It looks like a Texas Hero truck uh, assisting a driver because it looks like we do have a stall out there. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of road uh, people out on the roadways at this hour, but just always make sure that you're moving over or slow down whenever you see those flashing lights. It's not causing any big issues at the moment, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because this is right there along I-35 southbound at South Florida Street. Uh, Texad has also listed some debris in the area from that shot at Transguide. I've not seen anything yet. Just again, some first responders helping that driver out. Just be on the lookout and make sure you are driving carefully. Uh, we're seeing another stall over here off Loop 410 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. Uh, we're not seeing so much of a buildup. We are seeing something here along these eastbound lanes. So just watch out for that and prepare for a minor slowdown. And just a quick reminder, we have some lane closures happening over here off Loop 410. This should be wrapping up tomorrow, but uh, it's over here on the northeast side. We'll take place from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Some geotechnical and drilling work. So again, some few lane, a few lane closures out there along Loop 410 on the city's northeast side. But overall, the morning is a little bit busier than what we saw yesterday. Of course, we're going to continue to keep a watchful eye on this situation there off 35 at Florida's. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. And Mike, I know we're going to hit 80s by Christmas, but I like your holiday spirit. Your yes, cuff <laughs> thank you. Cufflinks are little, Christmas trees. My little yeah. Christmas trees. Oh, that's cool. There, There's so. kind of the forest green uh, pocket okay. square okay. going my on. Christmas and everything. trees on my tie. So uh -huh. yes, get in the spirit here. <laughs> Because it feels like it this morning. Grab a jacket before you head out the, the front door. And what a beautiful, beautiful sunset. Oh, my goodness, as the day slips away. And then this sunrise is going to be every bit as pretty because we've got a lot of clear skies out there. Now we are dealing with some fog in places, obviously. Not much. A hint of it there. Castorville, Port S.A., Pleasanton, then a whole lot more over around Victoria. That has dropped down five miles visibility around Catula. So we've got temperatures, which, yes, are very chilly out there. Downright cold, freezing, Valverde, Bernie Stage, Comfort, and 38 here in town, 36 in Lotus. So obviously, you know, it may be below freezing or right of freezing in your backyard. And some of these things are just the obviously reporting areas. But the humidity dew point temperatures are running neck and neck with those air temperatures and so with those clear skies that is going to allow the heat what leftover heat to escape out into space and we're going to be getting even closer to the dew points and when you get that very high humidity that's when you start to see some of that fog out there and that's why we'll have to watch it over the next couple of hours yesterday 59 high temperature really nice and we had a lot of sunshine obviously in the afternoon we're going to be warmer today this is about a normal high temperature right around the uh, mid 60s so what you would expect for the first official day of of winter. Winter begins. The solstice is at 9.58 this morning and it's going to last for about 
a day, maybe close to two days, if you will, going into tomorrow morning. But then as time rolls on, the humidity is going to start to go up. Now it's not going to be, you know, this this huge surge like the past few times we've had colder air and then the warm air has returned. The humidity is just, I mean, really come back with a vengeance. Yes, it will be somewhat humid as we go into the weekend but it's not going to be really oppressively humid. Here's what it looks like as far as the computer models. Not much going on. We're going to have plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of the week. Some, you know, a couple of scattered clouds here and there. A few morning clouds every once in a while. One or two left over in the afternoon. And that's going to be the situation going into Christmas Eve as well as Christmas Day. Going to church services Christmas Eve. Uh, it's going to be a nice night for it. Maybe a light jacket. And then, um... Well, pleasant start on Christmas morning, and it's going to be very warm in the afternoon and not a drop of rain in sight. We had our rain obviously last weekend. It's going to be dry now throughout the rest of the week and going in through the weekend and maybe even starting off next week as well. 59 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies out there and plenty of sunshine. A beautiful, beautiful day. 65 for high temperature. And then tomorrow we start off definitely on the cool side again. Not as cool. 45 degrees slightly above normal and high temperatures just start to bounce up taking two steps up the stairs at least as we get up into the each and every day get up into the low 80s so again to recap it looks like that record could be in jeopardy on at least one of the two days it'll be it'll be close to it on friday mm -hmm. i don't think either one of them are going to be there but it will definitely be one of the the warmer christmases a couple of years ago we had a very warm christmas and uh yeah this one's going to be up there as well well, uh, considering what we went through back in February, I think we're probably okay with yeah, this, this, right? Yeah, this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that again. No, no, I'm not no. saying that again. <laughs> no. but a little cooler not, or something. Not yeah. that kind of winter. Yeah, understood. <laughs> so maybe a happy medium somewhere. Yeah. If it changes, we know you'll let us know. 522, about 38 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, a first look at the Harry Potter cast reunion special, plus a preview of the Northman starring Nicole Kidman. Pick three numbers this morning, 165, Fireball 0, daily four number 6212, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 4, 9, 17, 18, 35, and your Texas two-step. 17, 21, 24, 34, bonus ball 11. And your Powerball numbers, 2, 13, 23, 34, 66, Powerball 2, Power Play 4. Good luck. Five twenty-five. A Harry Potter cast reunion is among the stories making entertainment headlines this morning. Here is CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. It's a strong bond that we'll always have. We're family. <laughs> we will always be part of each other's life. It's been 20 years since Harry Potter first cast his magic on movie screens, and a new HBO Max special is taking a warm look back with the cast and crew. Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint reunite for the special, which begins streaming on New Year's Day. Why would you throw away to such a hellish place? To find what was stolen from me. And what is that? The kingdom. You're getting your first look here at The Northman, which follows a young Viking prince on his quest to avenge his father's murder. Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, and Anya Taylor-Joy star in the epic action film, which hits theaters in April. Christmas week is typically one of Broadway's busiest weeks, but The Great White Way will be a little less bright this year. Hamilton and Aladdin are among the high-profile shows canceling performances because members of their company tested positive for COVID. Breakthrough cases are forcing at least nine productions to cancel some shows in the lead-up to the holidays. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Time right now is 526, about 38 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Omicron coronavirus variant has now been detected in most states. Why top health officials say the top Delta remains the biggest COVID-19 threat in the U.S. Plus time is running out to get those packages to loved ones. We'll know you which services are still available. Plus the first family gets a new puppy. We're going to tell you more about Commander coming up. Have you tried everything to clear your face of blemishes? What if everything you've been told to try is wrong? We'll hear some ex from experts coming up on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning, the Delta variant continues to cause problems as Omicron now dominates newer infections in the U.S. It's been a long night for our Northwest Side mother and for San Antonio police. 
As they continue to search for that woman's missing three-year-old daughter, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the update on that. And taking a look outside with live cam, a chilly 38 degrees, very appropriate for the first day of winter, which will officially start later this morning. And good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, December 21st. Thanks for being with us this morning. And although it will be the official start of winter, it will not feel that way for long. I guess, you know, Santa's going to have to wear some shorts or a t-shirt or something. Yeah, Mike's <laughs> going to talk about those changes coming up. But first things first, Mike, any fog so far this morning? I know you were worried about a little of that. A couple of hints of it uh, here and there and around the metropolitan area. Not too bad, but then you go well off to the east and there's a lot of fog along the, the coastal plain as usually is the case. 38 is the temperature, dew points at 36. So relative humidity, even though that number is very, very low, relative humidity is quite high. And with these clear skies and temperatures will continue to drop down just a little bit. And it's the ingredients in there for some fog. A little bit being detected around Castroville, Pleasanton, as well as Port SA. And then Victoria actually went up ever so slightly. Catula is still at five miles visibility, seven at Carrizo Springs. So not a lot, but it's still the morning is still young, so we're going to have to keep on the lookout for this as we approach sunrise and just after that. So again, a couple of spots of patchy fog mid 60s later on today. Winter officially begins just before 10 o'clock this morning and yeah, temperatures are going to feel like it. Actually, we're on the, the cool side of things this morning. Tomorrow morning, yes, it is still going to be on the chilly side and then things really start to heat up above normal temperatures and we're going to end up being Oh, almost 20 degrees above normal by Christmas. Yeah, in the low 80s with plenty of sunshine. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso. I saw a couple of flashing lights out there on the highways. Yeah, we got a little bit of a uh, busy activity out there off 35 at Florida. As you can see, we have some flashing lights out there. And if you have to head out, let's take a closer look and see what you can expect out in this direction. Uh, you can see that we do have a wrecker out there along with uh, looks like a first responder and a hero truck out there as well. Uh, now, this has been detected as a stall in that area. Let's take you to the map. Earlier, we told you that that was off I-35 southbound at South Florida this is actually quick type on my end. I apologize. It was actually North Florida Street. So uh, right over there, just make sure that you are driving carefully through that area. Again, I 35 southbound and North Florida Street is where Texas has that listed. Uh, also, there's some debris also that's been detected out there. So make sure you're driving carefully again if you have to travel to the downtown San Antonio area. We still have a uh, stall here off Loop 410 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. This has been there for a little while as well. It's not been presenting any big problems out there on the roadways, but I would say we are off to a somewhat busy your start than what we saw yesterday it was a very quiet morning, but looks like we have a few more people out there that are experiencing trouble out on the road. So just be careful. And if you do have to head to San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, for instance, on I 10 coming from Seguin to the downtown San Antonio area, just 29 minutes at this hour coming in from Lavernia on 87. It's 23 minutes and Floresville to the downtown San Antonio area, just 28 minutes at this hour. Again, just watch out for these first responders. Again, it looks like it's quite the busy scene out there. We'll continue to keep a watch watchful eye on the roadways. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A Northwest side apartment complex is ground zero in the search for a missing preschooler. There is an active Amber Alert issued for that three year old girl who disappeared yesterday afternoon from an apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road near Blue Mill. Katrina Weber is there with a live update on the situation. And Katrina, we understand police spent a good part of the night searching the area. Are there any clues? Well, I just checked in with a sergeant. He says they haven't found any trace of this child yet. In fact, he says that they haven't even gotten any information on a suspect, a possible suspect who could have taken this child. Still, they are calling this an abduction case. The three-year-old Lena Sardar Kill was last seen around five yesterday afternoon here at the Villas de Cabo apartments. Again, this is Fredericksburg Road near Blue Mill. Police tell me that she was at the playground in this apartment complex with her mother. They say the mother told them that she went to go get something, and when she got back, her daughter was gone. Officers searched the area, even brought in a dog, but have not found her yet. The three-year-old Lena Sardar Kill was wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes when she disappeared. She's four feet tall, weighs 55 pounds, and according to police, had her hair in a ponytail at the time. Right now, they are keeping a watch on this area. In fact, they have some of the exits blocked off and are keeping an eye on who's coming and going. But the sergeant told me after daylight, they will start with that active search, that thorough search once again. In the meantime, anyone who has any information on this missing child case is asked to call SAPD at 210 207 
210-707-7660. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for the update. This morning, Omicron is now the dominant version of the coronavirus in the U.S., accounting for 73% of new infections last week. Now President Joe Biden is getting ready to address the nation. CNN's Reed Binion has more. Today, we have uh, an announcement. We just had our first Omicron-related death. Um, a man in his 50s. Harris County, Texas Judge Lena Hidalgo announcing what is believed to be the first death in the U.S. caused by the Omicron variant. Omicron now accounts for more than 73% of new COVID cases, skyrocketing past the Delta variant within the past week as the dominant strain of coronavirus in the U.S. But what worries me is that we still have many people in our country who are not boosted. We still have a number who are not vaccinated. Public health officials, including the Surgeon General, urging Americans to get vaccinated and boosted. You should get all three shots of your Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. If you got J&J, &J, you should get that booster shot. Former President Donald Trump touting his administration's role in developing vaccines, getting booed when he said he himself had gotten a booster. Uh, did you get the booster? Yes. I got it too. Okay, so... Um... Oh, don't, 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 no, no. That's all. There's a very tiny group over there. This all comes as President Joe Biden prepares to address the nation Tuesday on the latest developments regarding the pandemic and the Omicron variant and deliver a warning on the risk of remaining unvaccinated this winter. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Royal Caribbean says 48 people on board the world's biggest cruise ship just tested positive for COVID-19. Symphony of the Seas returned to port in Miami December 18th after a week-long voyage around the Caribbean. More than 6,000 passengers and crew were on board when a guest tested positive. Each person with the virus went into quarantine. They were all either asymptomatic or had mild symptoms. Six people disembarked before the final stop in Miami. Royal Caribbean says 95% of people on board were fully vaccinated. There is a new option available in preventing HIV. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved the first injectable medication to lower the risk of getting HIV through physical contact. Apertude is approved for adults and teens, 77 pounds and heavier. It's given first as two shots a month apart and every two months afterwards. So pre-exposure, prophylaxis or PrEP medications were previously available only in the form of pills. The FDA noted that two double-blind clinical trials comparing the pills with Apertude found significantly lower HIV risk in people getting the injection. President Joe Biden and the First Lady Jill Biden have added to their family. A new puppy was spotted Monday playing on the South Lawn of the White House. The German Shepherd named Commander is a birthday gift to the president from his family. It comes after the Biden's beloved German Shepherd Champ died in June at the age of 13. The Bidens have also promised they will add a cat to the White House menagerie. Their German Shepherd Major was the first rescue dog to live at the White House. Aww. Time now, 538 and 38 degrees for now. Still ahead, we'll tell you which services will still allow you to get those last minute gifts to their destination in time for Christmas. Also next, as the winter holiday travel season roars back with inventions, flight attendants are asking the federal government for help. We're gonna tell you why. Outside with a live cam on your Tuesday, December 21st. Winter begins later this morning and then break out the sunscreen for Christmas. Mike has more coming up. 541, this may come as no surprise to many. Reports of unruly airline passengers have soared this year. The FAA says it has received nearly 6,000 reports. Now flight attendants are urging the government to take action. Seeing as Jen Sullivan takes a closer look at how airlines are dealing with the problem and how it could impact holiday travel. Home for the holidays. AAA estimates more than 109 million Americans will be traveling this season, a nearly 34% increase from 2020. But if you look at just the number of people who are going to fly, it's more like a 184% increase. And if you're flying to your destination, brace yourself for unfriendly skies. You gave me one warning. As of December 14th, the FAA says airline crews have reported more than 5,600 incidents involving unruly passengers. The agency usually investigates fewer than 200 incidents a year. 
and more than 4,000 of the incidents reported in 2021 were mask related. The biggest problem for flight attendants is that when there is inconsistency in communication, that puts us in harm's way because we are charged with enforcing that mask mandate. Sarah Nelson with the Association of Flight Attendants says changes are needed to stop the violent behavior on planes, including mandatory self-defense training and industry-wide no-fly lists for disruptive passengers and an end of alcohol to go cups at the airport. When people have that alcohol and then they go up in the air and the cabin is pressurized at 8,000 feet and they have less oxygen coming in, they, that, that affects them more and they make bad decisions. And it is a major contributor that is getting our people hurt and it needs to stop. And as travel soars to new heights this season, Nelson says the industry is ready. We believe that the holidays are going to be okay for the consumer, for the traveler, because we negotiated with the airlines incentives for people to come to work. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 543, about 38 degrees. Up next, you still have a chance to get those last minute gifts shipped to loved ones. We're gonna tell you about today's important deadlines. And welcome back, it's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, your last chance to send Christmas presents and well wishes to loved ones is now, like today. <laughs> While some shipping deadlines have passed, there are still a few options or shipping UPS. Today is the deadline for the three-day select service when shipping in the United States. And if you're shipping FedEx Express, you could buy yourself some more time with deadlines starting today and ending December 24th for same day delivery. So unless you want to shell out the big bucks for overnight or rush delivery, you better hurry up. And if Steph tells you you better hurry up, you better hurry up. <laughs> Supply chain issues are hitting Toyota again. This time the automaker says a lack of parts, computer chips is forcing it to suspend production at five of its Japanese factories. Toyota says the stoppage at factories will affect about 20,000 vehicles, but won't impact their annual target to manufacture 9 million vehicles. According to Reuters last week, Toyota said it was projecting a bigger production, uh, rather bigger reduction in vehicle production in North America due to supply chain issues. And if you're new to San Antonio, there's a big truck plant for Toyota down on San Antonio's south side. Right. And uh, speaking of trucks, I guess trucks on the roadway, maybe let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos to see how our roadways are looking. They're pretty quiet uh, right now, Mark and Stephanie. And if you are new to San Antonio, yeah, welcome. Uh, let's see what you can expect if maybe you want to explore the town this early in the morning. Uh, pretty empty roads, as you can see, 281 at Nakoma here. Uh, it's, it's quiet traffic throughout the morning. We had some issues a little bit earlier uh, with some stalls out off 35, but it looks like that has since cleared out. There's 35 at Florida Street, the shot we showed you earlier where we did have that stall vehicle again it looks like the driver received some help but a new stall there off 35 at st mary's just watch out whenever you see those emergency lights and flashing lights of course give those first responders and drivers plenty of room but right now the roads have been looking pretty great we expect that we'll continue to see this throughout the rest of the week because a lot of folks are off enjoying the holiday but if you have to head out early uh, be on the lookout because uh, although that that stall cleared off of 35 southbound at north lotus texas has solicited some debris in that area so again watch out for that and we still have this stall that's been there for a little while now at Port 10 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. These aren't presenting big problems out on the roadways because it is still very early and a lot of people may just be enjoying staying at home the, uh, today, but uh, just just take it easy out there. We have these inbound times. Just really quick reminder, 29 uh, minutes coming in from Seguina downtown, Lavernia 23 minutes and 28 minutes coming in from Floatisville. I forgot to take that out of there, but just if you are traveling to San Antonio, be on the lookout for that. Right now, roads have been quiet, but listen, we're not complaining about it for this holiday week, guys. We're not going to complain about it at all this oh. week because that gets us nowhere, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> to complain, trust gets trust us me on nowhere. this, okay? You're right. Trust me. Listen, good vibes only. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. Right. Agreed. With, with the weather as well. Yes. yes. It's nice and cold, you know, beautiful late fall. Well, last couple of hours, actually, technically of fall and beautiful moon out there. It's a couple of days past full. And yeah, it was just a glorious moon's going to be uh, coming up just after the uh, the sun goes down, because usually in the full moon phase, as soon as the sun goes down, the moon comes up, obviously. And uh, well, as far as sunrise is concerned, we are going to see a beautiful one later on today. And Castorville has dropped down a little bit more as far as visibility, Kerrville and now a hint of fog over there in Uvalde. 
Uh, Carrizo Springs, Victoria has actually improved ever so slightly. So again, we've got these hints of fog around here because we don't have a lot of, I mean, the moisture is very low in the air, but relative to the temperature, it's very, very high. And so that's why we are seeing some of that fog. 32 burning stage, Kerrville 31 right now in comfort, Balverde, and maybe right around freezing in your backyard in and around that area. And we uh, may drop down another degree or two. Now, as far as the dew points, they have actually dropped down just a couple of degrees compared to this time yesterday. Now, as we go in toward the latter part of the week, these numbers, we will kind of start going up each and every day as far as the, uh, the dew points are concerned as more humidity comes back in here. But it's not just going to be like a, a one day jump of 30, 40 degrees with dew points, but it will slowly go up as temperatures go up over the, uh, the rest of the week. Got some pretty dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, and still we can see this uh, kind of comma shape pattern over there. That's the low that gave us some of the rain around here and kept us on the cool side and cloudy side on Sunday. Now, as far as satellite picture, obviously nothing is showing up around here. And here is another vantage point of that low, which is con continuing to work its way off to the east. We may start to see a couple of more uh, sort of high cloud clouds hanging around here the next few days. Not completely sunny skies, but still it's going to be beautiful weather this week. And if you like warm weather, if you like hot weather, you're going to love the forecast because nothing is really going to be showing up as far as any rainmakers around here. A few high clouds, but then extremely warm temperatures today. 59 degrees right what you would expect as far as uh, the first day of winter. Winter officially begins again just before 10 o'clock this morning. Then we're going to top off at 65. Plenty of sunshine out there. A couple of extra clouds here and there over the next few days. Still jacket weather. I mean, even uh, throughout the rest of the week, you know, we're only in the 50s starting off. So yeah, light jacket. But then look at that. We get up to 83 on Christmas. Mm hmm. Merry I have, Christmas. I have a drawer with just gloves and scarves, and yes. I stumbled on that last night. And I looked in there and I said, maybe I'll see you guys next year. <laughs> Yeah, not this not year. You could use a, a scarf this morning and yeah. some yeah. gloves. Well, as you were standing cool. there in front of the, the full moon, yeah. it almost looked like you were outside and you just were miss, missing a scarf. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Good times. Good yeah. times. But, yeah. yeah. Still be a nice Christmas. <laughs> I-51, everybody. 38 degrees. And after 18 years, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss take another red pill and head back to the Matrix. We're going to have a special preview next. Lottery numbers, pick three, 165 Fireball 0, daily 4, 6212 Fireball 9. Cash 5, 4, 9, 17, 18, 35. And your Texas 2 stuff, 17, 21, 24, 34, bonus ball 11. And your Powerball numbers, 2, 13, 23, 34, 66, Powerball 2, Power Play 4. Good luck. Coming up, we've got breaking news on the Biden administration's aggressive new plans to fight the Omicron surge, as it now has become the dominant COVID variant in this country. The World Health Organization is suggesting that people reconsider their holiday plans. So we got to talk to the guy, Dr. Fauci, joining us right here on GMA. But this is the moment for you to show us what is real. After nearly two decades, Keanu Reeves takes another trip to the Matrix. I remember this. He returns as Neo in the fourth installment of the beloved sci-fi franchise, The Matrix Resurrections. Hi. Have we met? Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss reunite as their characters are once again pulled out of their idyllic dream world, and the two actors couldn't have been more excited to take the journey. Starting was really exciting, uh, a little nerve-wracking, um, but... It was incredible to be a part of and to make that film. The pair had to undergo major training to get a new set of highly anticipated action sequences just right. Yeah, I love that part of making a Matrix movie. Uh, Lana Wachowski creates an environment for us to be able to do all that we can do. So we have like a dojo where we're coming together every morning and stretching and kicking and punching and learning our different choreographed parts of the movie. And then in the afternoon, we tackle any other physical um, things that we need to do, like the, the building jump. Um, we practice that over weeks of different heights to get to the point where we could 
um, get, leap off a building. Yeah, my dream ended here. <laughs> In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The countdown to Christmas inching closer. If you haven't picked up some tamales yet, time is running out. But not to worry, our web team here at KSAP put together a list of places who might be able to help with those last minute orders. Just check out the article online at KSAT.com. Still ahead on GMSA on your Tuesday, a very uh, high scoring victory for our San Antonio Spurs. We've got highlights from their game in L.A. against the Clippers. We'll have the latest on overnight shooting on San Antonio's northeast side that sent two people to the hospital. An update on that Amber Alert. The search still underway for a San Antonio preschooler. And Transguide right now. Let's see how things are looking out there. A few flashing lights there at 35 at St. Mary's, not too far from the KSAT 12 studio. Stephen Cavazos will update you on that. And Mike has a Christmas forecast that is unbelievable as far as how warm it's going to get this weekend. They've been up all night, but San Antonio police are keeping their eyes wide open, looking for a missing three-year-old girl. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the update on that coming up. An overnight shooting at Southeast Side Bar sends two people to the hospital. We'll tell you what we know so far. And taking a look outside with live cam, if you like the cold weather, enjoy the 38 degrees we have right now because it's not going to last very long. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, rise and shine. It's Tuesday, December 21st. Yeah, a little closer to Christmas and today feeling like Christmas. Santa is going to ditch the mittens this weekend. <laughs> He's going to bring sunscreen possibly because yes. we've got some unbelievably warm temperatures headed our way. Don't forget, experts always say sunscreen every day, though, mm -hmm. no matter what the true. temperature or the cloud cover. But as right. far as Santa Claus's attire, yes, it is going to be the, the shorts and flip flops. So, um, can you picture that shirt, Santa in shorts and flip flops? Right now we're at 32 <laughs> degrees in Kerrville, freezing also at Fredericksburg Rock Springs at 39, 38 here in town. A little bit of fog. Castroville has some Pleasanton, a hint of it, and not much, obviously. Actually, Victoria has improved from earlier this morning, but just be on the lookout. Even around New Braunfels, just a, a hint of fog, just because we've got these clear skies and that's allowing the heat to escape out into space. And relative to the temperature, we've got a fair amount of humidity out there. Mountain Cedars on the moderate side, you know, even after that big front move through on Saturday in the windy conditions, Mountain Cedar has been uh, continually dropping down. Mold is also on the low side this morning. Temperatures, we uh, probably won't move all that much from where we are right now, maybe a degree or two. Lots of clear skies, good looking sunrise this morning, plenty of sunshine all day long, and we are going to be making it right up into the upper 50s today at noon. Winter officially begins 10 o'clock this morning. Just couple of minutes before that and it will feel like winter today. These are the kind of temperatures you would expect 65 for high temperature hint of Christmas at about 20 to that and that's what it's going to be like on Christmas. It's uh, the forecast is getting even hotter for Christmas uh, 80 on Friday and 83 on Christmas Day. Traffic Authority. Stephen Cavazos. <laughs> just got to kind of let that one soak in. Yes. Bit, so. uh, I said just go tanning on Christmas if you if you need to do it. So uh, right now, if you are going to be heading out the door, let's go ahead and take a look at the roadways, see what we can expect. Uh, we anticipate a very quiet morning here on GMSA, at least on the roadways, and that's what we've been seeing throughout the morning. Uh, we saw it yesterday as well. You can see it's getting a little bit busier with traffic picking up, but uh, saw there off 35 at St. Mary's. Just watch out for that. It looks like we have some driver that's getting some help, but I tend to program some areas are Pretty quiet uh, as opposed to a typical work day where we would see a lot more people out there by this hour. But listen, I mean, for people that are staying home, uh, this is some good news. And if you have to head out the door, be on the lookout, though, because we do have some stalls off I-37 southbound at South Cross Boulevard and a little bit further up, not too far, I-37 northbound at Pine Street. We have a stall detected there. Let's take a jump over here because we have a third stall, Loop 410 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. It's been there for a little while and some debris still detected right over here off I-35 south southbound at North Florida Street. So uh, these issues, although they seem a little bit scattered, they're very minor compared to what we would normally see this early in the morning. So again, some good news. And if you have to travel to San Antonio, we have these inbound times. If you're coming in from Pleasanton on 37, it's 28 minutes at this hour. Castroville to San Antonio, 90, 18 minutes. And we're looking at just 16 minutes coming in from Lytle on 35. So we'll continue to watch the roads closely. But right now, I think this is an early Christmas gift for us. So some quiet roads. And of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on them throughout the morning. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. 
San Antonio police say a three-year-old girl seems to have disappeared without a trace. They have been searching for her since yesterday at a near northwest side apartment complex. Trina Weber is there on Fredericksburg near Blue Mel with a live report this morning. We know there's an active Amber Alert for her, Katrina. Have police received any tips at all? As far as I know, they have not received any tips. I spoke with the sergeant. He says right now they don't have a whole lot of information. He says there is a bit of a language barrier involved between the officers and the mother of this missing girl, but he says they will be bringing in an interpreter later on. Now, what police have been able to determine so far is that three-year-old Lena Sardar Kill disappeared around 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon from a playground here at the Villas del Cabo Apartments. They say her mother told them she left for just a minute to go get something, and when she returned, her little girl was gone. Police say they have not found anyone with any information on a possible suspect, but they are calling this an abduction. Alina was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. She is four feet tall, weighs 55 pounds, and had her shoulder-length hair in a ponytail. Anyone who may have information is asked to call SAPD at 210 207 7660. In the meantime, police are keeping a close eye on this apartment complex here in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. They have officers posted at all the gates. They're checking cars as they come and go from this apartment complex. And police tell me that they will uh, start ramping up that search a little bit later on as daylight arrives. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. An argument leads to a shooting overnight on the city's southeast side. It happened just before 2 this morning in the 8900 block of South Presa. SAPD says the argument started at the parking lot of a bar between the victim and four male suspects. Police say the suspect shot the victim, then sped off in a black four-door car. Now, officers saw the vehicle speed off, but they were not able to catch up with them. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked a house fire on the north side. It happened just before 8 last night at a home on Maltese Garden. That's north of Blanco and Wilderness no Oak. Firefighters say the flames broke out on the second floor and crews were able to get to it and contain it. And everyone inside the home was able to get out safely. Now on to the current surge in COVID cases across the country. The first Omicron related death has been recorded over in the Houston area. The variant has now been detected in almost every state, pushing some hospitals to the brink yet again. And this morning, President Biden outlining new initiatives to battle the Omicron variant during the holiday season. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington this morning with more. This morning, a COVID scare for the president. He was exposed to a staff member who recently tested positive. The White House says Biden was near the staff member Friday on Air Force One. He tested negative Sunday and Monday. He'll be tested again tomorrow. COVID cases are skyrocketing, driven by the new highly transmissible Omicron variant. The variant now accounting for 73% of COVID cases across the U.S. and in some parts, 90%. This Omicron variant is stunningly transmissible. It is really ripping through the United States at an incredible rate. Later today, President Biden is expected to lay out new strategy for battling the Omicron variant. A thousand military medical personnel will be deployed to help overrun hospitals. That's a nearly five-fold increase. FEMA will set up hospital overflow sites to distribute supplies. New federal testing and vaccination sites will be created starting in New York City, where long lines for testing have been abundant. Also, the president will announce free at-home rapid tests for any American who requests one. Top health officials say if Americans aren't vaccinated, boosted, and wearing masks in public, the new variant will multiply quickly. Uh, we could be having a million cases a day if we're not really attentive to all of those mitigation strategies. And I don't know that we'll hit that, but there are certainly projections that say that could happen. Still, encouraging news from Moderna showing its current vaccine booster increases antibody levels 37-fold against Omicron, with Pfizer saying its booster increased antibodies 25-fold. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, you can still get vaccinated at the Wonderland of the America's Mall Clinic. The center is open for walk-ins Monday through Wednesday, 10 to 6. It's closed Thursdays and Fridays. Actually closed this Thursday and Friday. That same schedule next week. We have other vaccine clinics listed online at ksat.com.
And if you're shopping for an electric scooter, bike, or hoverboard, the Better Business Bureau has a warning. They say hundreds of GoTrax customers have reported not receiving a product or getting a faulty one. GoTrax is a North Texas-based company that offers steep discounts for the in-demand electric products. Customers report buying the products on the company's website and Amazon. On average, people have paid about $200 for a GoTrax product. That's another reason why I went with that company, because they have adult scooters. Like you see downtown when they're, they're right there, it was that kind of scooter. Electric, all that. It had a speedometer, a headlight, a radio, you know, it was a nice scooter. So, yeah, I, I'll just probably look into another company this time. Tanisha Nixon says she paid nearly $300 for a faulty electric scooter. So far, she says she has not heard back from the company. As of right now, the Better Business Bureau is reporting 286 complaints from GoTrax customers. Rapid spread of the Omicron variant is spoiling the holidays on the markets. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell more than 400 points Monday. The S&P is also down more than a percentage point. Investors also concerned over Senator Joe Manchin's lack of support for the Build Back Better bill and efforts from the Federal Reserve to roll back some COVID stimulus policies. If candy canes are still on your shopping list, they may be difficult to find right now. USA Today said that's due to ongoing supply chain issues that are now impacting peppermint production. And here at home, two local families winning ABC's Great Christmas Light Fight meeting for the first time. So last night, the Wilsons met with the Hinojosa family at their home in Wincrest on the northeast side. The Hinojosa family lives in Bernie. You can watch the meetup right now on our website at kset.com and hear what they say made this meeting so special. Spurs road trip continued last night in L.A. The Silver Black taking on the Clippers after an upsetting loss to the Kings. Spurs got out to an early lead, and that would set the pace for the rest of the night. San Antonio wins this one handily, 116-92. to DeJounte Murray delivered his third triple-double in five games with 24 points, 12 rebounds, and 13 assists. Here's a look at the week ahead for our Spurs. Next up, San Antonio plays the Lakers in L.A. on Thursday. Then the Spurs come home on Sunday to host the Detroit Pistons. And time now, 611 and 38 degrees out there. Are you ready to go bowling? Yeah, a bowl game, not bowling bowling. The UTSA Roadrunners are all set for their matchup this evening with San Diego State. We're going to have a preview a little later on GMSA. Just ahead, we're looking at, if you're looking to book an Airbnb on New Year's Eve, you'll want to know about their new party policy. We have those details for you. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's a nice morning to sleep in if you don't have to go to school today. We're at 38 degrees for now, but Christmas will look a little warmer. We'll be right back. And topping today's Tech Bytes, stricter rules for Airbnb. The platform is tightening anti-partying measures for people ringing in the new year. The company says guests without a history of positive reviews on its platform will not be able to make reservations for an entire house on New Year's Eve. Makes sense. All right, Google planning to cut off support to its OnHub routers. The controls will be turned off at the end of next year. After the cutoff date, the OnHub routers will continue to work as normal, but there will be no new software or security updates. Companies urging customers to update to a new Wi-Fi setup. And taking a look outside at the TransGuide cameras, there are people on the road, but not many right now. Yes, this is correct. <laughs> Some people are getting their morning started early with us. Not as uh, many people as we would typically see on any ordinary day, but that's okay because it's the holidays. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at TransGuide, see how things are shaping up at this hour. If you have to head out the door, US 90 No Galitos, it looks like it's getting busier there off 281 at Nakoma as well. You can see traffic has been moving, and thankfully there have not been very uh, many issues out there this morning. Uh, let's take you right to the map because what we've been seeing are just some stalls in the area. Uh, this one off I-37 southbound at South Cross Boulevard has been there a little while, and we have this one off 37 northbound at Pine Street, not too far. So it's a trend that we continue to see throughout the morning, these stalls that are popping up here. Let's take a jump right over here off 410 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. This stall has been there for over an hour now, so just watch out for that. And we are seeing these east and westbound lanes there on 87, starting to get a minor buildup of traffic. But as we take a jump up over here, some debris still detected off I-35 
65 southbound at North Florida Street. So I would say uh, even though we have these issues, the morning's not looking too bad in terms of the roadways. It's been a really nice way morning way to start the day. If you have to maybe head out to go shopping a little bit later, maybe grab that cup of coffee for that road trip. Right now things are looking good, but just make sure you continue to keep your eyes on the road. Guys, we will. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you. And no bus stop, but definitely a jacket for anyone headed out this morning. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's cold out there. We actually have just a, a hint of a wind chill as well. So it is freezing right now in Kerrville, 38 here in town and 45 down the road in Catula. The dew point temperature is at 35. So you know, those numbers are, are neck and neck dew point temperatures, air temperatures, and that's why we have got a little bit of fog around the area and light or no wind to deal with. Take a look at this picture. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, a lot of folks have the next, uh, you know, kids have the next couple of weeks off. Take a little drive out out to the west. Out, go out I-10, Devil's River State Natural Area. How beautiful is that? It's going to be fantastic this this week as well. Visibility, nine miles at uh, Port S.A., seven Castorville, seven at Pleasanton, so just a hint of fog here and there. Ca uh, Carrizo Springs has now dropped to just a mile and a quarter, so that has dropped off very, very quickly. Uh, about, what, 15 minutes ago, it was up to about uh, five miles visibility. Catula, some fog as well. So we'll watch this over the course of the next couple of hours and just be on the lookout as you're heading out there because you may just turn the corner, especially in low-lying areas, and get into some of this fog. Freezing, burning stage, Comfort, Kerrville. Bolverde was at freezing about a uh, half hour, 45 minutes ago. Not much of a breeze out there in many spots. However, where there is, we've got a wind chill of 34 in town. Feels like 32 right now at Randolph. So, yeah, definitely bundle up. So on the heels of the system that kept all the clouds around on Sunday, and that was the dry air that moved on in here, maybe a little bit of moisture moving in aloft. And so perhaps over the next couple of days, a little milky shade to the sky, one or two high clouds out there is not going to be any big deal. As far as the humidity, dew points are going to remain low all day long. They'll start to come up ever so slightly, not any like giant just, you know, leaps and bounds type increase. But over the course of the next few days, the uh, the dew points will definitely start to come up a little bit more. And as far as anything uh, going on other than a couple of high clouds, that's pretty much going to be about it. Just one or two of them out here the next uh, couple of days. We'll have lots of sunshine and temperatures are just going to continue to go up as we go in towards Saturday. Christmas Day going to be well up into the low 80s around here. So way, way above normal by anywhere from 15, 20 degrees above normal. 59 today at noon. Winter officially begins just before 10 o'clock this morning, and these temperatures are going to be feeling like it. 65 for a high temperature today with plenty of sunshine out there. Another cold one tomorrow down to 45 and really, I mean, 50s. That's jagged weather in the mornings, but boy, you sure won't need it in the afternoons. 78 on Thursday, 80 on Friday, close to a record high temperature and 83 on Saturday. We're not going to hit the record, but we are. It's funny because there are a couple of computer models that have us in the upper 80s on Saturday, which kind of wow. not disregarding that completely, but going a little bit consensus for us is going a little bit lower than that but um yeah it's gonna be one of the warmest christmases we've had around here in a long time for our early birds mike actually used the word hot yes. earlier in the newscast yes. well i haven't put my summer clothes away so good i have good options thing. Yeah. you can use them later <laughs> this week so. i will <laughs> thank you mike right now about 6 20 38 degrees this essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by walk on sports bistro Brooklyn from Walk On, so I want to give a special shout out to all the men and women overseas. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And Christmas is just a few days away, but believe it or not, there is still some time to get some of this year's hottest gifts online. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. Fresh flavors, classic dishes, and a new seat at the table. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. With up to 50% more lotion, Puffs brings soothing softness and relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. Take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor.
irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. In this morning's GMA First Look, shopping secrets from the experts. Shoppers can use really simple tactics like creating wish lists on a retailer's website or even just setting notifications for certain Twitter accounts. Anne-Marie Alcantara of the Wall Street Journal says if you can set up new stock notifications, there's hope that you might be able to find that sold out gift that's still on your list. She says start with the manufacturer's direct retail site. Many have signups to alert you when new inventory drops, then branch out. And another system that people can employ, which is really dependent on the retailer and what the product is, is virtual queue systems, no matter what the day is, what email, whatever you're doing, you can at least have a guaranteed place in line to get the item. And we'll have more tips, tricks, and strategies for getting those gifts crossed off your list all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Time now, 625 and about 38 degrees out there. Coming up next half hour of Good Morning San Antonio, Omicron continues to make its presence known and the first death related to that new variant has been recorded in the Houston metro area. We'll have much more. And police are still looking for a three-year-old girl who was last seen on San Antonio's northwest side. Katrina Weber is staying on top of this story and will bring us the very latest. And Stephen will get us updated on the roads this morning. It seems like we're seeing a few more cars this morning than we did at this time yesterday. Uh, maybe folks are out and about getting a few more things done or working one more shift before they head out of town for the Christmas holiday. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA on Tuesday, the 21st. It has been a long and probably sleepless night for the mother of a missing three-year-old girl. Police also have been up searching for her all night. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the latest on this story coming up. Outside with live cam, the beginnings of a Tuesday morning sunrise. It is chilly out there, especially in the Texas Hill Country, where Mike has recorded at least one temperature at freezing. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 21st. Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm wearing my snowman earring Yay. because it's officially the first day of winter. That's right. Later on, mm -hmm. got the Christmas tie. Mike has Mike? just about everything. Yes. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas tie, tie, cufflinks. Christmas cufflinks. So very, very, we are ready for Christmas. We're all set. Yes. Yeah. And it feels like it out there, nice and brisk and chilly and cold. And yeah, actually more than just a couple of uh, freezing readings out in portions of the hill country. A little bit of a wind chill this morning and enjoy it today. I'll just let that hang right there because, uh, yeah, once we get into the next couple of days, it is not going to be anywhere near this cold. But yes, we are going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning. You see a nice orange glow there. 38 degrees here in town, so we are about uh, four degrees below normal right now. Dew points at 35, so those numbers are fairly close, which means we've got relatively high humidity, which is why we are seeing a, just a couple of hints of some fog in the metropolitan area. Not too bad, but it is, uh, well, now, Carrizo Springs was down to just over a mile. Now it's back up to seven miles visibility for Couture, or excuse me for Victoria and five Gonzalez. So uh, it's not going to be a big issue this morning, but just again, watch out for it as far as any little bit of fog. Mountain Cedar is moderate. Mold is on the low side and uh, yeah, some patchy fog here or there. Otherwise, cold temperatures. We still got some freezing readings up there around Fredericksburg, Kerrville, even Valverde had touched freezing earlier this morning. Sunny mid mid 60s, so just about a normal what you would expect for the first day of winter and that's pretty much going to be it. We'll still have some cool mornings. It'll be down around mid 40s tomorrow, but the afternoons are definitely going to be heating up. We're going to make it up into the uh, well very quickly up into the low mid 70s and then the low 80s by Christmas. Yep, it's going to be a hot Christmas. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Steve Cavazos. Any big problems out there? Not yet, Mike, and I was looking at you, Mark and Steph, and all of y'all do look very festive and I'm like a I guess I don't stand out, but uh, I, I can't wear green because then I will blend in right behind it, but I will find true. something. I will find something this week. I promise that. Okay, let's take a look at the roadways because it has been picking up. Uh, we are seeing traffic moving there off 35 1604 at Shane Field. The morning is getting going. It is looking a little bit busier than what we saw yesterday. However, the issues have still stayed relatively quiet. We haven't seen any big crashes that would cause delays. We haven't any seen uh, any big slowdowns just yet, but some problems still to be on the lookout for. Uh, 
we've been talking about stalls throughout the morning. We also talked about it yesterday here off Loop 410 eastbound in Nacogdoches Road. We have a stall detected right there, but those eastbound lanes still look pretty green. As we take a jump down over here, we have some debris off of I-35 southbound at North Florida Street. Not causing problems, but keep in mind, this has been there throughout the entire morning. I've not seen anything on the TransGuide cameras, but again, watch out for that if you drive through there. A little bit further down here off US-90 eastbound at Couples Road, we do have another stalled vehicle. So as you can see, that is a trend of the morning, but as we take a wider look at the map, we still see a lot of green on the screen. Even though I can't wear it, I can still show it. So some good news there. And if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, green across the board as well. No delays are expected at this hour, but of course, we'll continue to keep a watchful eye out on the roadways and we'll track those stalls throughout the morning. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are doing their best to bring a happy ending to a missing child case. They have been stationed at a northwest side apartment complex all night looking for that three year old girl. That girl subject of an Amber Alert. Trina Weber is also there. She joins us live in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road near Blue Mill. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police have also set up a checkpoint there. Yeah, we have noticed them outside the gates or at the gates. They're checking cars as they're coming and going, looking for any sign of that little missing girl. A three-year-old Lena Sardar killed disappeared around five o'clock yesterday afternoon from a playground at the Villas del Cabo apartments. They say that her mother told them she left for just a second, then came back and realized that her daughter was gone. The police told me they have done a thorough search here, even using a dog, but have not found any trace of that child. They do plan to resume the active search after daylight. Alina was dressed in a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes when she disappeared. Police say she is four feet tall, weighs 55 pounds, and had her hair in a ponytail. Also in the plans today, police tell me, is that they will bring an interpreter here. They say they've had some trouble communicating with the mother of that little girl, that she doesn't speak very much English. But uh, police are trying their best to get all they can about this disappearance. In the meantime, they do ask anyone who may have information about this case to call them at 210-207-7660. Again, that's 210-207-7660. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Police are also trying to piece together a shooting overnight at a Motel 6 off of I-35 near Rinneman Road. Officers tell us that around 2 a.m., a man knocked on the door of another guest and asked him for money. Investigators say the man did get some money, but he wanted more, and that's when a gun was pulled out. The two men struggled back and forth over that gun and ended up shooting each other. They were taken to separate hospitals and they are expected to be okay. Men's in jail this morning accused of using a machete to rob a store over on the west side. Happened back on November 13th. According to an arrest affidavit, 30 year Rigoberto Hernandez walked into a discount store on Buena Vista near South Sarzamora, held a machete to a store employee's throat and then took off with money from the store's safe. Hernandez was later arrested and now faces an aggravated assault charge. A Houston area judge confirmed the first U.S. death related to the Omicron variant of COVID-19 on Monday. Health officials say it was a man in his 50s who was not vaccinated and had been infected with COVID-19 previously. The patient also was reportedly at higher risk due to underlying health conditions. This is the first known confirmed Omicron-related death in the U.S. According to the CDC, Omicron caused more than 73 percent of new cases in the U.S. last week and has become the dominant variant over Delta. Here at home, the first two cases of Omicron were confirmed in Bear County about eight days ago. That number is now up to five. We still don't know the full extent of Omicron cases, and that's because the genetic sequencing to identify variants can take up to 14 days. Dr. Anita Kurian with Metro Health says nationally case numbers are doubling every two days, and those who already had COVID are not necessarily in the clear. We cannot prevent the Omicron surge. It is surging around the world. It's a matter of time before uh, we, this becomes a dominant strain locally. A couple of symptoms of Omicron that are starting to emerge, sweats and body aches. If you experience these symptoms, doctors encourage you to immediately get tested. 
While there is some disagreement between doctors on the severity of infections, all agree best way to protect against Omicron variant is to be vaccinated, boosted, and wear a mask if you're in a crowded area. Well, at least 375 people have died after Super Typhoon Rai swept through the Philippines last week. It's according to the latest tally from the Philippines National Police. In addition, 515 people are hurt. 56 people are still unaccounted for. The storm made landfall Thursday at a popular tourist and surfing destination with winds up to 160 miles per hour, the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane. An arrest was made in connection to a shooting at a mall in Lubbock. Police say a 15-year-old boy has been charged with aggravated assault. Two people were injured when shots were fired around 5.30 p.m. on Sunday in a common area of that mall. Both were minor injuries. Police say the shooting appears to stem from a dispute between two teens who knew each other. Another big national headline this morning. Jurors resumed deliberating today in the manslaughter trial of former police officer Kim Potter. After days of emotional testimony, closing arguments centered around whether the shooting of Dante Wright was a tragic mistake or extreme negligence. Here's ABC's Rick Klein with more. The defendant told you her sons will be home for the holidays. But you know who won't be home for the holidays is Dante Wright. This morning, the fate of Kim Potter, the former Minnesota police officer who shot and killed Dante Wright during a traffic stop, is now in the hands of a jury. In the same courtroom where Derek Chauvin was convicted of murdering George Floyd, Potter's lawyers Monday made the case that Wright's death was a tragic accident, saying Potter mistook her firearm for her taser. Nobody's perfect, ladies and gentlemen. And this lady here made a mistake, and my gosh, a mistake is not a crime. Potter's lawyers insisting she was justified in using deadly force because she feared Wright would injure another officer while driving away. Dante Wright caused his own death, unfortunately. If he would have gone and went the officers, been handcuffed, go to the squad car, go take your ride downtown, and it's over. But the prosecution urging the jury to reject the idea that Potter simply made a mistake. There's no mistake defense. You will not see an instruction on the defense of mistake. The judge will not give you an instruction that says a person is not guilty if they commit a mistake. That's not the law. Prosecutors arguing Potter was reckless and negligent in her use of force. She knew she had both weapons on her duty belt. She knew how to get it right, but she failed to get it right. She failed Dante Wright. Rick Klein, ABC News, New York. San Antonio police warning about a new scab that involves QR codes. Listen to this. Police say someone is placing QR code stickers on parking meters downtown here in San Antonio, tricking people who use their cell phones to scan the code, which then directs them to a fake website that takes your credit card information. Investigators say whoever's behind this is forcing people to use the codes by jamming up card slots. It's little things like this. You're in a hurry. You shoot a QR code. Uh, you pay some money to a website, and it turns out to be the wrong website. And, you know, we're, we're all, unfortunately, we're aided by technology, and, of course, we, we suffer at the hands of technology at times. San Antonio police say you're better off using meters that print out receipts. It's game day for the UTSA Roadrunners. They're hoping to add the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl trophy to their collection tonight. It was on display yesterday before today's big game at Toyota Stadium up in Frisco in the Dallas area. Roadrunners at last check as of last night were three point underdogs ahead of the matchup with San Diego State. It's even though they have the better record than the Aztecs and won the conference championship game. Tonight's matchup starts at 6.30 p.m. San Antonio time on ESPN. Remember, you can get all of our UTSA Frisco Bowl coverage on air and online at ksat.com. Good luck, guys. Yeah, they're the underdogs, but that's okay because they had an awesome season. They sure did. Well, congrats so far. Time now, 641 and 38 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to hear from the experts about what's true and what's false when it comes to taking care of your skin. And welcome back at 644. Are you trying everything you can to have a clear face and perfect skin? But what if all the things you've been told are not true? RJ Marquez breaks down what to believe and what not to when it comes to your skin. 
We've all had skin that looks like this, and this, and even this. But what if how we've been told to take care of our skin isn't true? When I educate patients on, on if they come in with a skin myth, I'm usually trying to go and look at what the evidence shows. Fact or fiction, drinking eight cups of water a day promotes clear skin. We lose moisture barrier from the very top layer of the skin. Um, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with water intake. Scent-free moisturizers, short, lukewarm showers, and moisturizing right after bathing will do more for your skin than drinking water. And what about this one? Avoid eating chocolate or you'll have acne. We don't really see a lot of correlation between diet and acne. There's other factors that are likely involved. Last myth, purchasing expensive skincare products are better for keeping your skin looking young. For the most part, it doesn't really matter. Harvard Health reports that products with topical vitamin A-based drugs called retinoids may reduce fine lines and wrinkles and can be found in products sold at drugstores. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And here's another question. Are skin products labeled as natural better for you? The answer is no. The word natural has no regulatory meaning in terms of the FDA. The term organic is regulated by the USDA and only means the products are free of synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, and other non-organic substances. It's important to note that natural and organic products are not necessarily safer and can still cause allergic reactions and skin irritation. Tuesday morning time check, 646. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, the roadways have been looking pretty clear throughout the morning. There's 35 at St. Mary's. You can see things have been moving pretty quickly through this, uh, smoothly, I should say, through this area. There's I-10 at Proban. Uh, morning is getting going, so we are seeing more folks out there. Getting a little bit busier there off 35 at the upper level there at Brooklyn. But uh, be on the lookout. Some stalls still remain in the area. So Loop 410 eastbound and Nacogdoches Road. We told you about that a little bit earlier. Uh, seeing the same problem over here where we had a stall earlier off of I-35 southbound at North Florida Street, but now it just looks like some debris remains in that area. A little bit further down, US-90 at Couples uh, in those eastbound lanes, we have a third stall detected out there. So again, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. If you have any errands to do today, you want to make sure you get there on time, but more importantly, safely, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And what a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. I love all the lights there. And it took me a moment. I was looking over that and it's like, yeah, boots and crit and yeah, that's a great display there with all the boots. Thank you very much for the AKSAC Connect picture. All right, going in toward Christmas Eve. I love this graphic. We are going to be in the upper 50s, mostly clear skies. So it, it no, there won't be any snow falling in the background there, unfortunately. But um, it is going to be a very nice night. So if you are planning to head off to, uh, you know, relatives house, going to uh, evening church services for Christmas Eve, it should be a very pleasant evening for that. And boy, this morning, what a great looking sunrise in store. Lots of uh, lots of clear skies out there. Hints of fog here and there. We've got more going down toward the coastal plain. Uh, Victoria four miles visibility five Catula, so nothing too thick right now, but it has been kind of going back and forth in spots. So just just be on the lookout for a little bit of fog. Freezing, Balverde, Bernie Stage, all the way up I-10 and at Comfort and Kerrville. And a little bit of a breeze out there. Not much, and that's why we've got some fog. But there is a hint of a wind chill in places. Bandera and the airport both feel like 34. It feels like 32 Hondo and Randolph as of right now. The humidity, which is on the lower side, is going to start to come back up over the next couple of days. It's not like it's going to be soaring humid, but it's obviously not going to be as dry air as we have right now. So when you get these uh, dew points staying up there in the uh, 50s, 60s, that means the low temperatures won't be anywhere near as uh, as cold. We might have a couple of high wispy clouds out there over the next few days, just one or two of them. Not any real big deal. Plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of the week, and that's going to be the situation going into Saturday as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be hot. And can't can't get around that. You know, it had looked a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it'd be a little cooler, but now it's pretty much locked in that it is going to be on the the warm to hot side for Christmas. 59 degrees today at noon. So today is going to be exactly what you would expect for the uh, start of winter. The official start of winter just uh, before 10 o'clock this morning. 65 for high temperature today. Tomorrow down to 45 and nice chilly. And again, all these morning low temperatures. Yeah, that's still jacket weather, but Sure, not in the afternoon, mid upper 70s by Thursday and close to a record on Friday. That's going to be the closest we've come to a record. I don't think we'll hit it on Saturday. 
although there is one computer model that has us in the upper 80s, not going with that as of right now, but uh, it will be one of the warmer Christmases, obviously, that we've had. I couldn't even imagine upper 80s, like 88 degrees or something <laughs> on which day? Uh, Saturday? Saturday is Christmas what day. one computer model is looking at right now, which <clears> is a little, <throat> I think, kind of pushing things, but um, it's still going to be hot, 83 degrees. Okay. Santa That's keeps checking the case out weather authority app going. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? He's going to have to pull out his red t-shirt. Does Slay have air conditioning? <laughs> we yes. hope so. And we think Santa uses our app. Right now, 650, about 38 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about the five biggest weather events to hit the San Antonio area over the past year. Justin Horn will be here to break it all down. Outside with live cam, the sun is coming up. Beautiful sunrise. Take a look at your screen before we head to break. You're watching GMSA. She has disappeared without a trace so far. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That's what San Antonio police say about a missing three-year-old girl. That child disappeared from this apartment complex here in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. That's right near Blue Mill. Police say that three-year-old Lena Sardar Kill was last seen around five o'clock yesterday afternoon. Her mother told her that they were at the playground here at the Via del Cabo apartments. She says she left her for just a second, came back, and her little girl was gone. The police have been here since that time. They actually did a very thorough search, came up empty-handed, but they've been posted here all night, watching people as they come and go, checking cars going in and out of the gates. They say they also plan to ramp up the search and do a more thorough search as daylight arrives. The police tell us there was a bit of a language barrier with the mother, and so they're going to also bring in an interpreter later on. Meanwhile, if anyone has seen this little girl, they are asked to call San Antonio Police. The number is 210-207-7660. Reporting from the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We, of course, will continue to track that story on air and online at ksat.com. Northside ISD is making sure children here in San Antonio don't go hungry during winter break. They are providing free meals while school is out. And coming up this morning on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Wet does this live from Mary Hall Elementary School with details on how this program impacts more than just NISD students. We're a day closer to the holidays, but some folks still have to get to work. What's the latest, Stephen? Well, it's been a quiet morning. No crashes that would cause issues, but be on the lookout. We have had stalls. That has been the trend throughout the morning. 37 at Fair Avenue. Take a closer look here from this shot at Trans Guide. We do have a stalled vehicle off on the shoulder lane there. It doesn't look like they have their emergency lights on. So again, watch out for that. We continue to see that problem of debris there off I-35 southbound at North Florida Street. But this stall right over here off US-90 eastbound at Couples Road. Looks like that has cleared out. The morning has been off to a green start. Just make sure you take it easy out there this later when you get out on the roadways, Mike. Grab a jacket. It is definitely cold out there. Beautiful sunrise in store and temperatures at 38 degrees. Got some freezing reading up to the north, northern Bear County and up in the hill country. A little bit of a wind chill to deal with, a hint of fog here or there. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. And uh, 65 for the official start of winter. Then we go into the first full week of winter and it's going to be hot. So it's hot on Christmas, 83 degrees. Very and you and I are going to be off for the next couple yes. of days. Mark. Yes, so if we don't see you again, Merry Christmas to Merry my Christmas. GMSA family and everybody out there. <laughs> But we'll see you back here at 9 for now. We will? I mean, yeah. we will. <laughs>